Sandra here from Creating Spain and today I'm using shortcuts a lot for the professional version, okay, the pro version. Now the reason I'm using this one today is so that I can show you the feature which is the weeding feature and to show you how it can be used to your advantage, why you might need it and how to actually use it. Okay, it's not complicated, it's a very easy tool to use. But you just need to think about the results of using it before you put it into action. And just think about the way that you weed your material. Now for this particular exercise, I've chosen to do some text. And you can see from the screen, one of them is quite thin text, and the other one is nice and thick. Now, if I were to be cutting this out in vinyl, the chances are I probably wouldn't bother putting weeding lines in. The reason for that is because, I mean, if I was doing it this size, certainly, <laughs> this is a 12 by 12 mat, um, the amount of difficulty that you have with the weeding depends very much on the surface area of the material that you actually want left. And in this particular case, there's quite a high surface area which is actually going to be left. And because of that, the vinyl can actually stick to its backing and stay stuck. The bits that you want to remain behind are more inclined to stay behind and are easier to make stay behind than they are if, for example, you have a very fine text like this one, where the surface area of the letters is far less and therefore they come away from the backing a lot easier, which in some circumstances would be good, but if you're trying to weed out the bits you don't want, that's not so good. So this one, for example, I wouldn't bother to weed, but this one I would. So I'm going to move this one out of the way, put that to one side, and concentrate on this one. And I'm going to select it and I'm going to zoom in so we get a really good close look at it. And that's about as large as I can go on the screen. So we have the text and we've, whoops, I <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Go back, back a bit more, back a bit more. Whoops, bit too much. Okay, I just use this. And go up a bit more. Okay, that'll do. Now, I'm going to just move it down. Um, I'm not sorting out the actual text for cutting, i.e. I'm not doing the welding and all that sort of stuff, and in this particular case I wouldn't need to anyway. But this video doesn't concentrate on that, this is solely on the weeding aspect. So you need to go to the effects and you go down here and you click on weeding and your window comes up. Now, can I get this to be any bigger? Okay, it just makes the work area larger. There is an explanation to the left which shows you what the various options are for the weeding. And you can alter the border offset. Border offset is this cut line which it places automatically around your uh, area that you've highlighted. So you can give it a bigger box or a smaller box depending on what you want. And in most cases, the standard is the right one to choose. If you did that, you'd be finding yourself with a bit too small an area around it. So the standard, that's fine. Now the other bits that you want to sort out are how to actually get the extra bits weeded out of here that you don't want without picking up all the letters in there that you want to remain in place. And one of the easiest ways of doing that is to divide it up across its width so that you can take out smaller chunks of the background. If you were to try and take off the entire background in one go, it involves a couple of different things. Firstly, you need about five sets of hands to hold things down, pull things up, pull things away, 
And of course, final sticky, you get it over your fingers, you can't get it off your fingers, you can't pick anything up, put anything, uh, yeah. So if you can do it in slightly smaller chunks, that's a reasonable idea. So you might decide, for example, that you want to put some lines in to divide the words. If you have a long line, that's quite a good thing to do. However, what you might decide to do instead of that, or as well as, perhaps, is to divide it off so that, for example, the top third of the letters have a line going through. And if I choose this option here, this option, the third one, puts lines on the outside of my shape and then through any holes that are in my shape. So I click on that one and click on a space in between some letters roughly where I want the line to be. There we go. You can see that it has put a line across. Now, if you look at this, I have made it so that it is very, very close to the top of those letters. Not quite at the top line, but pretty close. Okay. And that would certainly help me. I could get rid of that bit without too much difficulty. The only bits I'm going to have to worry about are those little dots over the eyes. They are always an issue. <laughs> they, they are always, 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 always an issue. So you would have to be careful of those. And that would mean that I would then, once this is gone, I can then actually hold down some of these bits while I peel away that bit. But I could also put another line on the lower third, like so. And in this case, what I might decide to do is take out the middle section first and then go for either end. And that's quite often the easiest way of doing it to go for something that definitely isn't going to be let up. Now if you decide you don't want the lines that you put in, just go to the reset and you can do them again. So maybe I decided, oh, maybe I think I put the line at the top too high up. So I could click in a space a bit lower down and then I could put my other one here, okay. So if I were to take out this middle strip here, there is nothing in that that is a complete shape that can actually be lifted up. All the rest of it is still going to be basically tied down in amongst the other bits of the letters. So that would be very helpful. I said if I wanted to, I could put a line going in between them. And I just need to look at my computer screen a bit more closely. And okay, if I choose this one, this will go through everything. But I'm going to click on the places in between my words anyway. So there we go. And then if I was to actually decide that was what I wanted, just click on OK. And then you can see your lines that are going to be cut. In here now you can actually move this box it's a box in its own right so you can move it if you decide you want to move it slightly up or down left or right you can do so but that will show me where my letters are now if you do move it make sure that you line up those gaps where they're supposed to be so you need to make sure that you are going to get your cuts exactly where you need to get them. It's better not to move it out of the way, to be honest. You can, but it's better not to. Okay, so you can always click the undo button if all else fails and get it back to the situation you were in to start with. So that is how I would divide up this particular area. Now, if you're doing patterns, it can be different. You just need to think of getting some weeding done that doesn't take a full shape into account. Okay, because if I move this completely out the way, if I had a weeding line and it took the whole O, for example, into account, then there would be quite a danger that I would take out that bit of the O as well as the bit inside it. Whereas if I've got only part of it coming out, 
there's less likelihood of the whole letter lifting up. So that's how you use the weeding tool. It's very easy, it's very useful. And if you do a lot of vinyl cutting, then it's definitely worth getting the hang of that tool. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.